gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Addicted to Anglin. Yet again today, we're back on the bank, dressed in the carpy greens, Parker Bates hoodie, and I'm fishing for carp. The weather is warming up nicely. This is literally just a day hit. And the reason I've come out is because I've got a new toy and I have to use it. I know what all you anglers out there are like, you're the same as me. You get a new toy and you have to get out, you have to use it, you have to see if it is as good as what you think it's going to be. Of course, judging from the uh, name of this video, you'll know what my new toy is. It is a baiting pole, something which I've been meaning to get for a long time and something which, you know, they cost a lot of money, something which I didn't know if I really needed, but Parker Bates. I'm an ambassador for Parker Bates, I'm a creative ambassador. They have released a new bait and pole, and believe it or not, the name is called the Parker Baiter. What a name. Now this pole, I've managed to get my hands on one of the first ones that are released, and I've come down to see if I can use it to place my baits in the places where, don't get me wrong, I could probably cast to, but this is gonna be pinpoint accuracy, you know, I'm gonna be able to drop it exactly where I want, and then bait up exactly where I want over the top of it. So yeah. Let's crack on. I'll show you the Parker Baiter in a minute. I'll take you through my day session. The weather's beautiful. Let's see if we can get a carp. Now let me just show you the Parker Baiter before I send it out on its first journey over to the area in which I want to fish. This is the Parker Baiter. Now take a look at that. Okay? In there I've got a mixture of OG fruit and nut crumb little bit of OG fruit and nut sauce. I have in there also some uh, fruit and nut flat spot. But if you look at the spoon, the spoon's absolutely lovely made. Yeah, it's got Parker Bates written down the side of it. Not a bad looking bit of kit to start off with, but I'm now gonna get this connected up, get this sent out to the area in which I wanna fish, and let's see if I can nick a bite from it.
Well, hopefully that footage is going to come out. First ever time using a baiting pole. Don't get me wrong, it takes a tiny bit of getting used to. I'm not going to say you can jump on it straight away and position it exactly where you want. But, you know, practice is going to get perfect. I, first time I did it, I messed up a little bit. Second time, bang on the money. Third time, bang on the money where I want it. And while I was actually shipping it out and doing it, one of the ghosties from the lake, who were very spooky, was swimming around underneath the pole while I was shipping it out. Because obviously there's no disturbance whatsoever. It actually came under the pole, and then when I dumped the um, bait and the rig, it turned and it went towards where I just dumped it. Is that a good sign? I tell you, if I have that fish out today, I will be made up because that is one of the fish I want out of here. You don't see it very often, but it was just underneath the pole, like I say. It's, but there you go, stealthy fishing, which is what I like. But they're both on the money. They're both in positions to which I'm very happy. You know, I really am happy with the way I've uh, put them out. So let's see if I can get a bite. Now, day session, weather's beautiful. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to chill. I'll go through some more information about the Parker Baiter in a little while on the video. But for the meantime, let's just sit back and see if I can nick a bite. Come on the carp. Well, the rods are out. I'm nice and relaxed. I've just had a vanilla cream for breakfast. Absolutely love them from Tesco's. But I'll just show you what I'm using today on each rod. One rod, I've got the Parker Baits, OG Fruit and Nut. Wafters, little dumbbell wafters, absolutely brilliant bait. I've had quite a few fish on them. Bream and carp, but the carp do especially love them. And on the other rod, I'm using the match the hatch OG fruit and nut pop ups. But I've trimmed the one down that I'm using, trimmed it right down. That's on the left hand, no, that's on the right hand rod, sorry. Wafters on the left. And yeah, we'll see what happens. The moorhens are absolutely loving the fact that the oily slick is coming up from the uh, fruit and nut flat spot. You know, I love the flat spot, just managed to get hands on some more. It's like a uh, oily additive. Let's see if I can find it, it's got to be a somewhere. Ooh. Where are we? Two new ones in here, I'll get one out and I'll just show you what they are. Now, like I say, this is the Parker Bates OG fruit and nut flat spot it is a game changer it is absolutely amazing now literally just put it put the um, mix inside the spoon I'd already put some in the mix just a little tiny bit but then obviously before I put it out I squirt some over let it soak into the crumb now that obviously clings to the uh, crumb goes to the bottom and then it will slowly glob up and disperse across the bottom up through the layers carrying some of the particles with it, attracting the fish. But the best thing about it is, it'll flatten the surface off and then all, you know, after a while, obviously, most of it's uh, the top layer that's come off initially disappears. So you'll have the movement on top of the water. But then when you start getting fish feed on your spot, it'll flatten off. Now I've seen this personally myself when I was fishing close in at the water park. I'd put a load in a stick, I cast it out and I'm sitting there, you know, I'm watching the water. Now at the corner of my eye, I noticed something different. Now the spot with a close in, and all of a sudden you could see it. It had come up, and it had all like you know, the top of the water was flattening off, and you could actually see the water flattening off. Now I knew there was a fish there. Five, six, seven minutes later, it weren't that long. <laughs> off it went. Now it's just a visual indication to show you that the fish are on your spot and the fish are feeding. And I'll be totally honest with you, it smells bloody lovely too. Fish love it, like I say, bird life are loving it. The moor ends here. They're getting stuck right in. They're not going onto my spot. They keep cruising over the top of my spot, and one of them, you know, he's, he's, like that. he's all over the top, picking off whatever it is. They must love that fruity taste. But weather, you know, it's clouding up a little bit now. It was meant to rain a little bit today at some point. I've got my waterproofs in there, but I don't think it's going to be that bad, to be honest with you. There's only one over on the lake. He's quiver tipping up there for um, skimmers. He's having quite a uh, productive day, which is. <sighs> Don't get me wrong, you know, it's all watercraft. He's catching, so therefore, the water temperature must be coming up. Even skimmers, roach, everything like that, you know, they're all cold-blooded fish. 
you know they will feed in the winter as well but there's more fish being caught which to me says there's more activity under the water like i said i've seen the ghosty i'm just hoping now that that rod screams off because i really want to nick a bite from here today you know that bait and pole absolutely fantastic uh it's 30 meters it's 30 meters you know it's the spoon that comes with it is big enough for a lot of bait you know i've not put a lot in there today i've just put enough in there for um you know probably a half a scoop to you know three quarters of a scoop of the ridge monkey large scoop plus my bait on top my rig on top you know it's now there i know that it's in the spot i know the spots where it's are, are quite good you can cast them like i say don't get me wrong but it's one of them things to get it perfect you know you might have to cast two or three times whereas that i've made no disturbance on the water at all today silently out splosh silently back and like I say, there was a fish cruising around under the pole. They're not scared of it. I can really see it being a game changer for me. I really can. I am looking forward to um, heading off to some other lakes with that where I know there's some, you know, lilies, islands, little gaps where I can just drop it into the little gaps. And we'll see. Like I say, you'll be seeing a lot more of it in my vlogs from now on. A lot more of it in my vlogs. But the rods have been out about half an hour now. I'm not expecting anything straight away. It takes a little bit of time here even if the fish are here to get on the feed i've seen some boshing down there i've seen fish cruising around down here they're awake they're moving just let's see if i can snare one you know i really want to get a fish really want to get a fish so let's see time is now coming up and it feels ripe for a bite i've not had any indications any liners nothing at all to signify there's fish in my swim like i say i've seen movement i've seen fish boshing down the other end but nothing over my swim yet but it's not an issue in this lake you know sometimes you uh, don't see anything and you have a massive hit of fish so we'll see and like i say the weather's warming up the bird life is back hadn't seen much bird life on here recently you've got the more hens moving around the ducks they're all feeding they're getting their heads down you know you can tell spring is in the air which is always good it really really is but like i say lunchtime picked up a uh, meal deal from tesco standard day session fare for me meal deal picked up the wrong sign though so i'm pretty devastated to be honest with you i hate barbecue sauce and the sandwich i thought i picked up was chicken bacon and cheese didn't notice it's barbecue chicken bacon and cheese I hate barbecue sauce but I'll leave it anyway see what it tastes like going with that some cheese and onion crisps to put inside the sandwich while I eat it crisps inside a sandwich for me that's the one that is the one but yeah let's see like I said I'm really hoping that I'll pick something off today really really am I've got a feeling you know there's there's something in the air today spring is here like I say and it feels a lot more bitey it feels a lot more carpy so we'll see but anyway I'm going to eat this and I'll come back to you in a little while and let you know what's going on. Right, I don't know if you can see, but I've moved swim. Literally just next door. Where I was, I was looking up. Sat there for a little while. Hadn't seen much movement. I've got a feeling that this swim here, there's a little gap under the trees there. And then right on the corner of the island, I'm going to stick the other rod as well. You know, I'm hoping that's going to hold some fish in here. But, let's get this spoon out and let's see if I can get a fish from this swim. See what I mean? It gets a little bit, takes a little bit of getting used to, but 
once you do, you know, it shouldn't be. Then it has a little. Oh, and there we go. Look at that. Straight into the spot. Straight over. See what I mean? It's only the third time I put anything out with it. But you can adjust. You can move it around. But I'm not making much disturbance on the water. That is what I love about it. You know, if that had been a cast, that would have been splash, 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 etc. etc. But there's nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just a stealthy approach to get this back in. That's one rod out. Beautiful. Now all I have to do is set the line. That's tight to it. And then away. There we go. Ready, ready? Ready for the second rod to go out. Gotta say, I am really, really liking this. Now don't get me wrong, like I say, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but what a bit of kit, eh? Well, I'm going to get that second one out right near to that island and let's see where we go from there. Right, well that's another session done. Like I say, today, obviously I've had baits out, you know, but I was more focused on tr practicing with the baiting pole. First ever time I used one. First ever time I used the new Parker baiter that I've just purchased. And what a bit of kit, you know, a valuable piece of equipment it is gonna be for me in my sessions. Placing that bait in those outer reach areas like underneath the bush, like I showed you earlier, you know, it's the sort of places only a bait boat can go and when bait boats aren't allowed on the lakes those baiting poles are amazing plus the stealthy approach i couldn't believe it when i was shipping it out earlier and that ghosty was just swimming actually underneath the pole itself you know that says it all but thank you very much for watching you'll be seeing the baiting pole a lot more in my videos and if you are interested in the parker baits baiting pole keep an eye on their website i know the first allocation have already gone but they will be getting some more in very very soon so thank you very much for watching um, i'll be back on the bank soon i've got a carp session planned at hilton valley uh, next week so that will probably be one of the next videos coming out i've got a lot more sea, sea fishing videos planned as well a lot more sea fishing videos planned they're going to keep coming out hopefully weekly if not weekly there may be a gap every now and then where it jumps to maybe you know i miss a week if i've got work commitments or family commitments etc but if you like the video please give it a like please give it a subscribe and you know please share on the social media platforms just get the channel rocking and growing again Thank you very much for watching. You take care of yourselves and I'll see you by the water very soon.